Okay, so this is my bottom layer. That's going to be exposed. Okay, that's going to be my deck side layer. And then I've got my second layer and my cross ply. Okay, you have to glue each side. So a layer of glue is going to go onto each side. And you shouldn't use much more than probably that. Now, you can see that the colours change is just going to be, it's going to go slightly opaque. That's the coverage that you want. Nothing more than that. And basically, this is where it gets crazy. So any excess, scrape over to the next layer. And really, you just want it wet, and like I said before, opaque. Scrape that over to that side. And make sure you get a good, even, thin coverage. This is the part that I, did, I took a little bit of struggle with. It was the first time I painted it on. I actually painted the stuff on, okay? You can see there's stippling, okay? And there's an opaque cover. There's an opaque coverage on the material, okay? Nothing more than that. If I scrape that with my fingernail, you can see the difference there. That is all you need. Next layer. This one will be double-sided. What's your time limit on drying time? Minutes. You want to have it in the bag within 10 to 12 minutes. So is this a two student job? No. Uh, to glue? I wouldn't necessarily. You can. If you get two kids that work well together, yeah, absolutely. Okay. You can have up to 20 minutes of bag time before you get it into the bag. I wouldn't want to push it because then the, the glue is already starting to do its thing. Okay, that's too thick there. You see that there? Yeah. Okay, you've wasted that material. If you put that in the bag, it's gone, you're done. What will happen to it? What's that? What will happen to it? What will happen to it? Yeah. Evidence up there on the board. Okay, you see that big hump there in the chunk on the yellow? There's a hump there. The glue was crystallized by the vacuum. And you've taken a section out. Taking a section out to show you exactly what happened to it. There's a big hump in there. There's also three humps on the other side. Apply this side down. Okay, this is where you've got to be swift. I'm not going to say really quick, don't rush it, but work quickly. Not time to have a chat, not time to go to the room, the cupboard, and go and get something cut for a student. You can't stop the process. Yeah. Right. Middle layer. Crossplay. When the kids are walking around with the crossbar, just watch them that they don't break it. If they do snap the crossplay, a little bit of masking tape, it doesn't matter. The strength is horizontal mm. across the board. The masking tape will hold it, the glue will set in the gap there. There's no error. The kids will want to break down and cry after they've sanded them. Honest truth is they don't really need to sand the ply layers too much. Okay, nice little layer. And if you had yourself set up, you could do five or six boards. Make sure your ends are done, make sure around the outside edges are really nicely. Okay, again, consistency, opaque. Alright, opaque. Any more than that? Okay. Mm -hmm. You're gonna end up with a board that's gonna be horrible. And then of course you let your students step well. They let themselves down, but it'll be your fault no matter what you're doing. So have we got three more? Um, two more under there. Yeah. 
So just make sure you check all the veneers before they come to you. Some might have uh, knot marks in them. Okay, you don't want the knot mark on the top surface. You want to just shuffle that down in between the layers. And don't put the cross ply on the top or the bottom layer. And it's the easiest to chip. So you got to cross fire two layers in. Yeah, so it's, it's, from either it's, end. It's uh, normal, normal cross ply. We try not to edit the video, so you guys have a realistic time of how long you've got to get it in the bag. Okay. It's right about oh, just shy of eight minutes, I think, since you started. Eight minutes. The only thing I would suggest is if you're using a thinner bag than what we're using right now, is put a layer of cardboard in there. Come back and put that back there if I need it. And what's the benefit of the cardboard? The cardboard will stop the edges of the of the plywood, okay, putting holes in your bag. Because you've got your splinters, yeah. you've got your rough edges here, okay, you don't want to be chasing little air bubbles or little air leaks, okay? Because if you're using the pump system or a, a, a bag system, we'll show you a little bit later, you don't want those little microfine holes in it. And the beauty about using the tight bond is it's industry standard, okay? And also, it washes off in water. Okay, there's four other industry standard skateboard industry standard glues that they use. One's called SK8, the number eight. Another one is, um, I think it's an SC315 or something. Okay, industry standard, high impact resistant, water resistant. Be careful on your last layer, you don't need any glue after this. So we'll just put this one down as we need it. <coughs> Too much there. Take that off. As soon as it starts looking like paint, scrape it off. Cut a piece of that tire tube off, please. <coughs> Scissors should be over there. Uh, just a, a, a band about that wide. Just making sure we're enough for the top layer. Up near the clamp up there because I've got to clamp one of those pipes off. Okay, so there's all seven layers done. Both sides except for the deck layer. Okay, so you can see that the paint where we started went from about there. We've used about 15 mil in the bottle. Close it off now. Play our top layer. That's our top deck. Make sure it's on to the skateboard and rubber bands. Rubber bands do nothing but just to just keep it in line and keep the, the breather material intact. Okay, I'm just making sure that we got the ends the right proportion. Okay, We're watching that we don't pin any corners or any holes. So we have plasticine at the hand, so if we do find a hole later on, we 
know. So rather than making one bag and chucking it out every time you make a skateboard deck, just be careful when you put it onto a workbench, your skateboard's going to rub a hole through there. So the more you work it, you want to make sure you've got some sort of material or some sort of cardboard. Make sure you don't pull on that joint. There's it. That's in the bag. So do you just recut that bag open? And then recut the bag open. Get it a little bit shorter each time. Leave the pipe in there. So we're going to lose a little bit. We're only losing this much. Yeah. Every time we want to make a skateboard there. Okay. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just going to put a hole in this bit of plastic tube here. So basically what I do is I just clamp that off like that. That way there's no air coming out of this line. This line is ready to go. Now, there's different methods of putting them in. I'm not going to talk too long about this one. The one that works for me is I'll just cut a little piece of tacky tape, just like that. It's double-sided rubber tape. Peel that off. Okay, wrap it around. Okay. And then punch very carefully a hole in the bag. Make sure you don't do two holes at one time. You use a pen, pencil, whatever, it's just got to go in there. So that's fitted in there nice and tight. As I push that in, I'll the surface, and basically I'm going to smear that tacky tape right down so that I know that now I've got an air, air, tight, that air tight seal. All right, can get the vacuum out now, so that the pump's sucking away. The reservoir is letting go. I'm just making sure that I've got the board lined up even. You need a pump going to, to free it. Take a couple of minutes. What we're looking for is we're looking for pinches on the edge of the bag. We're making sure that the bag doesn't get sucked in between the deck. You see it's all starting down here. And we're listening for holes. Making sure that there's no bag getting sucked in between the board. I'll pick it up in a second, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Watching this end here. Okay, be real careful that we don't... Okay. So the moment that's reading minus 40 kPa, you can see we've pretty much got our skateboard done here like this. Our pump will pull that down to about minus 80 kPa. Any more than that, you can start crystallising the material. Flip it over for you. Just watch that. There's the material here. We're just going to have a quick look at the deck. Make sure we haven't got anything. You see that there's a, a natural curve that's going to be there. That's because the board's already been shaped. So because the plywood is solid, it'll come through like that. We're watching for holes around these corners here. That's where the piece of cardboard will come in and actually make sure it. Now have a look at the profile. There's your skateboard there like that. That one's done. Okay, so we're waiting for pressure to build up. We've got a good bag on that one. And you can see the definition of what we've got there. Okay, we place it, we drill it, straight off the mold, straight through the deck that we've got there. We drill those holes there. We don't change the proportions of the skateboard. If you change the proportions of the skateboard, your angles, your ollie and your kick height are really going to be different. So you can't move these holes anywhere further or forward or backward. Some will say you can. However, those good skaters in your group who are buying $150 boards will know the difference. So please make sure you pick the holes. Okay, we're heading towards our goal on the pressure. So I'll leave that in the bag there like that for about three hours with the pump on or depending on the amount of pressure that escapes in a minute when I let the pressure out or turn the pump off I'll actually have it running so that it only runs for 15 minutes 15 minutes on, 15 minutes off depending on the leakage rate out of the bag So you'll have an idea of what we're looking at now we should have a fairly good pressure I can turn that off for a moment unplug it re-plug it in there and basically I'm just going to set this on a 3 hour timer Okay. And then we're right to go. The Royal Rocket materials you get. And I haven't honestly tried the polystyrene foam. 
because we'd already gone and bought. We had the pumps, we had everything else. And this is a, 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 a set that was supplied by the Linda at um, Australian Skateboard Kits. So there's your, your, your mould. Your bag. What you'll see is this is a very, very heavy duty bag. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you should be able to get a couple of boards out. You're not worrying about the infusion bag that we just used. Okay? The infusion bag is going to be thin. Alright? The thicker, the thicker material you get for your infusion bag. Okay? A couple of these, you should be able to do a whole class worth of boards. I don't want to sell more of it, but. Okay? We bought some extra valves and some backups to our bags. If you didn't have electricity, if you're going around and you're going to different schools, for example, you'd have a set of this and your kids could make a board up in the deck. This is the pump. You'd apply that to the pump like that. Suck it through. Okay. And there's a, a pressure clicker. And when it starts to click, you stop with the pressure on the bag. The kids will come back every 30 or 40 minutes and they'll just reapply the pressure on the bag. So you don't even need the pump and the setup that we have here. Okay? So in that way it's a little bit more cost effective. It's a little bit more efficient for us to do this way because we had all of the infusion technology there. Like I said, that's my backup. Right? If I need a random board and I've got a kid that wants to work in a different room, mm. easy rather than taking the whole setup out, he can go through and, and it's that's sealed at one end with the gummy tape. Yeah, that's right. So the tacky tape is what seals it. So you peel the tacky tape off. You just got to make sure that when you peel the tacky tape off, you use the bag and you reseal it, that you don't get any rubbish stuck between it. Okay? If you get any glue or any rubbish stuck between it, Never come off. there's our pressure. So we're right on pressure point. We don't have any leaks that we're worried about. And if you wanted to run at a slightly less pressure, our system we just knocked up together. Okay, we have a little bleed off valve here. We could run that as, as, a less, as a least pressure. If you didn't have this setup, I've used an old spray gun. Same deal. Hook it into the line just over here, and I can control the amount of airflow that's going into the system, okay, without doing any damage to my pump or my vacuum bag as well. Mm -hmm. We'll just show you how. We'll just turn the video off for a minute. We'll show you how to set up a second bag. So we'll do two boards today. And basically what we'll do is we'll show you the pool boy mould to start with, okay, and then we'll actually make a pool boy board, but we'll just show you how we transfer over. So we've got one line here still planned, okay, we know that it's fairly efficient, and it's just because I was mucking around with the pressure before, that this is all sealed still. This is what the pool boy board will be going on to, we'll move this one over to here. You could run up to six to eight of these lines anywhere around the room, as long as you clamp them off. You can have eight boards going at one time, or, or four groups of two kids doing it at any one time. So they're all part of the team. A really important thing for some of these boys to get to get to know that, that hey, we need some help to do this sometime. So this is the pool boy. This is the pool boy mold. This was the one that took me well, well over probably an hour and a half, maybe two hours to make. Okay, with a um, well, with some PVA, a um, what's it called? Electric plane. Okay, and a belt finisher with nothing more or less than this. So it's all ply and you've so just it's molded all ply. it. It's fairly thick ply and you'll see what I did was there. I just got a little bit, um, I don't suppose the boys would call it a bit ghetto and we've just sort of forged that up a little bit. But make sure we took all of this. This is just a protective bag. This is not an airtight bag. This is just so we don't get any glue onto the raw timber mm -hmm. and we destroy the mould. You'll see this is the board that it came off. This is the board we make off this mould. Kickers, depending on what you want to do, but you'll see, all right, it sort of looks a little bit like uh, one of the really early Carl Peralta's, Christian Horsoy, back in the 70s and 80s, and this is the sort of skateboard I was learning to ride on, first got involved in. So, same deal again, once you've got your shape and you've got your profile, okay, just measure it. I can't give you the specs on it, but basically if you have a board, use it and copy it. And basically, you want to make sure that you mark your centre line. Okay, you want to make your centre line because you mark your centre line. 
that's going to show you where the center line is for your curves, and it's also going to show you the center line of where you want your truck holes to go. Now on this one, because we marked out the center line, we've actually got the template, and that was just freehand. Have a look on the net, there's heaps of drawings, there's heaps of skateboards there, you find some full size drawings. You should be able to just pretty much, when that comes off the mould, cut it and shape it, okay, down your side. Students will look at you kind of funny, okay, and I'm sure some of us haven't used those in a very, very long time, <laughs> but the spoke shape, great tool, fairly safe for kids. We don't, can't get a plane onto the rounded surfaces, but you'll see the spoke shape will actually work those edges and get into those little curves really, really well. Okay. And if you set the blade up, they can only take a very small amount, but they use that to round their edges off. It's been 13 minutes and 50 seconds. My uh, very good mate, first timer, <laughs> we'll just call him DC for short. Did an outstanding job. Did an outstanding job. Quite most things he's pretty good at. Just want to show you how to transfer the air and the vacuum over. If you're doing two, three, four, five, six boards, it doesn't matter. Okay, you see I've got the seal off. This bag here is sealed at the moment. Okay, I want to keep the pressure in the bag. So I'm going to turn off the pump. It's going to keep the pressure on. And I have a second one. Just here? So I've got a piece of tire tube so I don't pinch my hole, pinch a hole in the, in the tube. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to seal this one off now. Okay? And I'm just going to lock that off there like that. Tight. Good to go. Alright, so now this three is free. I've put my tacky tape on already. I'm about to pierce the hole into the bag. Same deal again. Make sure you don't do two sides and make sure the hole's not overly big. You want it to stretch while it's going in. You're going to slide that in there like that. So the tape, tape touches the hole. A bit long. Have it slide again. Make sure it goes down the length of the board. The breathing material is pretty important. Okay. Anybody who does fiberglassing will tell you that yeah, the more breathing material you do use, okay, the more area you've got. So now we're going to take that to suck out the air. So there's our pressure line now like that. We've now got our valve, we've got our valve. Now we're just sucking down our second bag. Our first bag, we've still got the pressure in it because we've locked off the line. Okay. So now we're just going to wait for this one to pull itself down. And we've left this one fairly wide. You want to go 10 inch trucks, you want to go 9 inch trucks, you want to go 8 inch board. It doesn't matter, you can run it any way you want. You see the pump's starting to work now. We don't want pinch between the bag. We don't want the bag to get sucked into there because that's where it's going to go. We want to make sure we keep an ear open, okay, for holes, particularly around the tops of, see that one to suck in there? So we'll come through like that and we'll suck that right down. Okay, and there it goes. You don't have to force it, don't put the pressure on it, just let the pump do the work. As we're going around like this. Pull that out of the gap. Pull that out of the corner. Okay, and don't forget. Okay, so that's nice and out there like that. Run around, that's all good. Put some gap in here. Just gonna pull it out. Now if we weren't happy with that, We'd be able to just bleed off the valve. Just going around, making sure I've got no bag pinch underneath any of my pillows here. That's off. Right going around the board now, making sure. A little bit of a pinch here, so I'm just going to back off the pressure with my bleed off valve. Gonna let a little bit of bag pressure out. You see it's been sucked right under. 
that comes that comes out to release that pressure. Pull in the bag out. Watch your fingernails. Don't put holes in bags. You never find them in. And then we've got that there like that. That'll still be okay. See I've got the bag out. Should be able to get a little bit more sucked down onto the shape of the board itself. Okay. You'll see that we've made this board at least okay, 12 inches wide. Okay, expecting it to be cut down to about nine, nine and a half, maybe ten inches. Okay, that's starting to suck down nicely. So now we're just waiting for our pressure to build up. And because this one's already pressurized, we don't want to leave this one the chance, the fact that we might have a very small leak in the vacuum. We've still got a couple of hours left on this one. So we're going to release the pressure on this one again. The tank will support any variations in pressure drop. Okay. No pressure drop at all. We've got two boards done. You could have a whole row of boards being made at any one time. Just using one vacuum pump. Um, I think the vacuum, the vacuum pressure that you're looking at is if you put one atmosphere of pressure, you're looking at over a ton. Okay, per square inch of pressure capable. But if you're using a big pump like our resident, our resident infusion pump, okay, oil will evaporate, you'll evaporate, you'll, you'll vaporize the oil, you'll pull too much pressure in the bag down to one atmosphere, and you'll crystallize the glue. The water will boil at room temperature. Um, if you want to refer to something, have a look at freeze-dried fruit and the process they use for freeze-dried fruit. Okay, but this will actually crystallise the glue, and the smoke will actually be vaporised, and the bench top will be covered in vaporised oil. You will burn out, and destroy your pump. So avoid this style of oil-based pump. Have a quick look at this. This is our um, thing we use. It's quite a, an expensive piece of kit. If you have an obvious air bubble or an air leak or a, or a pinhole. Um, you can find it fairly quickly with your ear, a bit of straw maybe, um, or a bit of plastic pipe. You just run it around the plastic pipe to your ear and you'll be able to pick up a very high pitched buzzing noise. Okay, this is what we use in the resin infusion system. Okay, so basically what we'll do is we'll put that in there like that, put the earphones on, and when we push the button, we'll go around and we'll get a reading. And if there's a leak or a high pitched noise, that will actually get picked up on the scale. And then basically we just put a little bit of plasticine straight over that hole or along that seam where we've got a crack or a split. Okay? Uh, a little bit of an expensive part of the kit, but when you're resin infusing and you're dealing with uh, carbon fibre or $80 worth of, $40 worth of skateboard gear, you want to make sure that you have a backup plan as well.